Slicers aren't limited to displaying boring old text, dates or numbers. We can also display symbols like currencies, weather, cards and more, adding interest and maybe some fun to your reports. Let's take a look. Here I've got a slicer that displays currency symbols. As you click on a currency symbol in the slicer, the chart converts the selected currency and the title updates accordingly. Now there are just four components to this example, so let's step through them and then we'll look at some other examples of symbols in Excel slicers. On this sheet here, I've got the table containing my currencies, the symbols and their appropriate rate. Now the symbols I've inserted via the insert tab and then over on the far right, we've got symbol. This opens the dialog box so you can see there's the pound symbol. We've got the euro here, the yen and so on. You can choose different fonts using any of the symbols you see here. Now I need to insert a pivot table based on this table. So on the insert tab, pivot table, we'll pop it down below. And here I just want to see the symbol in the row labels and the rate in the values. I'm going to right click and remove the grand total because I don't need that. I also want a slicer for my symbols. This is going to allow my user to choose the currency that they want to see in the chart. Now I don't need the header for the slicer, I think it's self-explanatory. So I'm going to right click and go into slicer settings and then turn off display header. And that will allow us to make it a lot smaller as well. Now I'll move it up here because this is where I'm going to pop my chart. Now as I choose a currency in the slicer, you can see the pivot table below updates to show the currency that I've selected. And all I need to do is convert my sales here into the selected currency. So you can simply reference the sales times the currency here. Now because this is a pivot table, it inserts the get pivot data formula. I don't want that. I simply want to reference the cell C19 and I'll F4 to absolute that reference. So when it's copied down, it stays locked on the exchange rate and we can test it. Let's close the field list down. As I select different currencies, you can see it's updating in the table. So let's go ahead and insert a line chart for this data. I only want the date and the converted amount. Insert, we'll do a line chart and we'll pop it there. We'll just test that it works. Yes, we can see the vertical axis values are updating based on my selection. Now one more thing we can do is add a custom title that updates to show the selected currency. So let's go ahead and insert that in this cell here. So I want it to read sales in and then I'm just going to reference the symbol in the pivot table. So there's my dynamic title. Now all I need to do is select the chart title in the formula bar equals reference the title, press enter, and there it is. Let's test it out and it's updating. Now, if your user selects multiple currencies, it's only going to convert based on the first one displayed in the pivot table. Because remember, that's the cell that we're referencing, that first one in the pivot table. So we can build in a little warning for our users. And we can do that by modifying our chart title. So we can say if this cell here, and let's just reference the cell rather than using get pivot data. So if cell C20 is not blank, then let's let them know, please only select one currency. Otherwise, return the chart title. Close out if. So there's the warning. You can see it in the chart. If I select one currency, it correctly returns the chart title. If I select two, I get the warning again. Now I've used this technique for just one chart, but you could use it to convert a whole dashboard into different currencies. Now there are tons of different symbols available via the insert tab and the symbols dialog box. However, you must watch out for symbols that require a special font, for example, webdings or wingdings and the like. And this is because slicers have a default font and if you want something special, then you have to create a custom slicer style. And I'll cover that in a moment. Now, if we look at the weather font here, you can see on the home tab that the font is wingdings and they're all wingdings. That's important. If you're going to have a custom slicer style, then you must choose symbols from the same font family. The cards are just Arial, so nothing special there. And this last one is Bell MT. 
Now, if we look at the slicer for the Bell MT font, you can see the Apple icon doesn't display properly. So you'd have to choose something different there. I should point out that you're not limited to using symbols from the insert symbol dialog box. You can also use symbols found in the Windows character map. To bring this up, go into the Windows search bar, type in car map, open from the character map program. And then in here, we can search through the long list of symbols. When you find the one you want, for example, let's say I want this one for spades, I can select it and then copy it. Go back to Excel and Control V to paste it into a cell where I can use it and copy it as I need. To create a custom slicer style, it's super easy and it travels with the Excel file. So with the slicer selected, we get the slicer tab on the ribbon and in the slicer styles, we can choose one of the styles that's along the lines of the colors, for example, that we like, and then right click and duplicate it. And then selecting the whole slicer element, format, and under font, you can choose it here. So for example, we can choose webdings and set that as our font. Let's give this one a name. We'll call it webdings and click OK. Now I haven't applied that slicer style yet, so I'd have to choose the slicer, go into the styles, and then at the top in the custom, the first one will be the last one you created. So if I choose webdings here, you'll see it affects everything in the slicer. Obviously this isn't in line with the font that I have in my source data. Remember this is Arial, and that's why we get hieroglyphics here. So let's change that back to just the light standard slicer style. I hope you found these techniques useful. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.